The Glad Media Award goes to. Gladiator. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Call me by your name. Accepting the Glad Media Award for Call Me By Your Name is Oscar-winning screenwriter James Ivory and producer Peter Spears. I wrote a speech. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. After being here this evening, I'm not going to use the speech. I just wanted to say that <clears throat> I live in New York, and sometimes I'm going along the street, and people come up to me that I don't know, and they take my hand sometimes, and they say, I want to tell you that you changed my life. But they're not saying that. They're not saying that about Call Me By Your Name because it's too soon. They're talking about Morris, which I made almost 30 years ago. And I'm thrilled when people say that. I mean, or not exactly thrilled, but I mean, I'm touched and moved. And, and many, many people have said that to me, not only here, but in England. In England, when they say it, they kind of pull me aside. And they say it. But it's, nevertheless, it's, it's good to hear. Now, with Call Me By Your Name, I'm going along the street, and all kinds of people come up to me. Like an old couple, an old married couple, husband and wife. They could be in their 70s. And they'll say, we saw your film. We loved the film. It was something fantastic. We loved it. We loved the love story. Thank you so much. Or I watch it sometimes, I watched it recently in a, uh, in a university and, and there were a lot, of, a lot of very young girls sitting there. They were like 15, 16, they were crying away at the end of the film. They had to go out of the room and then come back and then say hi and stuff. So thank you very much for this award. It means a lot to me. I like the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's here in New York where I'm concerned. So, thank you. Can I have you uh, I wanted to just say something. Um, I just wanted to add to that. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the AIDS Memorial Instagram account. It's an amazing, amazing uh, collection of memories of those that we lost and those who survived. And, uh, and I'm every day so moved by the stories that are shared there. And I came across one story a few weeks ago that I think sort of encapsulates why we all, uh, Jim and I and Luca, our director, and Timmy and Army and everyone involved with this movie made this movie. And if you have a moment, I'd just like to share with you that, this post. Uh, from a man named Andy Horvitz. I grew up in the 80s in a flat, fag-hating, upper-middle-class suburb of Chicago. We were reformed Jews, and when I was 15, I met a girl. We started dating. I thought of myself as straight, as the worst thing in the world was homosexuality. My parents would disparage the gays they saw in the city and any man who was effeminate. I read an article in 1981 in Time magazine about a gay cancer. I was horrified. I was still straight when I went away to college and I fell in love with Tim, who had not yet come to terms with his sexuality. We both panicked. He described our feelings as some sort of dread, which he called the Shreks. Tim said he was dating a woman and I was devastated. My grades suffered and then I started to have panic attacks. I graduated and went home to my parents' house to live. I slowly started to work in the city. I began to meet men and I realized I was gay. I was very close to my mother, and one October evening, I asked her to come upstairs. She thought I had been behaving strangely, and when I told her that I was gay, she was sickened. She said it was a disease, and that she never knew a single homosexual in her life, that I had to see a psychiatrist, that AIDS proved the whole thing had backfired, that it wasn't normal, that my father would die if he knew, that my youngest brother hated fags, and where would she and my father be when I was 35 and had no wife and children? She went into the bathroom and threw up. We never had the same relationship again. 
I came of age into the awareness of my own sexuality during a time that forced me into a world where I had to dodge shame and overcome the loss of love from people who I thought would love me no matter what. So glad, thank you for this award, but most importantly, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the hard and important work you have done over 30 years to pave the way for us here tonight. And in these challenging times, I keep thinking of the advice a friend gave me, something that everyone gathered here in this room shares in common. Every day, going forward, tell your stories of who you are and how you love, what you believe and what you've learned along the way. Don't be silenced. Refuse to be erased. It matters. We matter, now more than ever. Thank you.